So, hello, 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 and a massive hello to everybody. Hope everybody's having a great day. It's 50 pips rocking and rolling here, 10th of August, 2020. No trade calls, no recommendations. Everybody's sponsored for their own stuff. We're here for educational purposes only. Sessions are recorded. You'll get an email recording as soon as it's over. As long as you use it for your own personal use only, nobody will be blocked, nobody will be banned, and we will all behave as one big happy family. So all good, guys. I just recorded this because... Um, I'm probably going to post these on YouTube this week just for just for some giving back, right? So this, as we said, normally this week here is our holiday week, so we're usually off, no webinar this week. But uh, since I'm not going anywhere, I'm going to be around, we might as well check in and see what's going on. So the webinars this week, you know, they might go 15 minutes 30 minutes, whatever, as long as they need to. As long as there's questions, I'll stay on, but we'll keep on uh, just trying to keep a stab on things. So what's going on, what's going on, what's going on? We're coming from an interesting week and we'll have to see what happens. Naturally, uh, this is a quieter period in the market. I mean, this week we do have uh, RBNZ on Wednesday. We've got CPIs on Wednesday too. We've got uh, Australian unemployment and uh, the weekly jobs numbers on Thursday. We do have retail sales on Friday, but probably the biggest event risk is headline risk, right? In terms of, are we gonna get something out of Washington in terms of, you know, relief bill? Are we gonna get something out of Washington in terms of Biden's VP pick? Are we gonna get something out of Washington or out of, you know, the whole China, US China? Uh, relationship and debacle. So again, we'll just have to be a little bit careful. The way I'm trading this, or I'm going to be uh, working, as I mentioned last week, is basically checking in for uh, London Open, right, and pre-London Open to also see if there's any opportunity to play some kind of that ON uh, mid-morning to 3 a.m. ramp, right, where uh, we see the futures kind of pop for no reason. We'll see if there's an opportunity to try and take some scalps there. If not, just then take it really easy until uh, early US flows come in, do the webinar until the hang around, watch US open until the 10, 11 a.m. mark, and then take it easy, go off, do something else, and come back for the last hour of trade. In terms of what's happening, well, basically we're trying to see, we're, we're, we're seeing the what we expected was this dollar to put in a low and to get that turn as we'd seen that top come in on gold, the top come in on silver, uh, those reversals, copper also moving, uh, moving uh, heavily back to the downside. And all this was pointing to this, this turn in the dollar, which again, if, it gets traction, we could see a short period where, you know, you see a lot of these correlations go to one, right? Basically gold down, silver down, crude down, um, bonds down, etc. And that could be a very interesting dynamic, especially in an illiquid market. Now, just as a reminder here on the DXY, um, probably four hours a better chart here. This is the, the bottoming pattern we were looking at, right? And our base case here was that at the very least, we'd see a retest of these highs here, which is that's pretty much where we are. And now we'll have to see, you know, is this going to squeeze higher or any dips going to continue to get bought into this area for this reversal back up into the 96? Remember, the broader range that we've been looking at and we've been trading for a long time on the, on the DXY is this 198.96 right? We were looking for this to break down. And so the breakdown is in play. So for the bearish thesis and the rotation lower and the unwind to, to move in extensions and move nicely, any kind of rally, we don't want to see any rally close back above the 96. If we get closes back above the 96, we're going to move back into more neutral uh, view of the dollar inside this area. But as long as that 96 holds, you know, we're still looking for more downside. And that also comes in line with our bigger forecast on Euro on some of those things for the rest of the year, right? So here, big test today. We'll have to see how this behaves here. Bull bear line for the day. You see you've got essentially here, you've got the 100 on the four hour coming in. Bullish above for a retest back into that 96. Bearish below, but we wouldn't necessarily be looking at this as a new low. We expect any move down to find buyers right around this 93, 92, 80 
for a repeat of a little bit move high, right? And what that means is essentially all these trades we've been looking at, right, are trying to get that tr some traction, right? And that is despite the fact that we were long Euro, a reversal back down on Euro, right? Failure here, we're, we're short, right? We're pretty much, we got TP1 done, TP2 done. We're looking for this to come back into the 115. So that is still in play. If you look at it on the daily, right, this basically that 115 is this breakup zone, right? We're not necessarily, you know, wouldn't be surprised to see this correct lower. But again, the base case assumption here is that we're going to see this try and move back down into that level. And, and this level should hold. Actually, what's interesting here, you see the weekly S3 is coming in around this zone. So this would be, you know, we'd expect this to hold this week from a closing basis. And again, so that no real change there. Again, if anybody has any questions on this, on how they're managing this, uh, don't hesitate to ask. This is the cable. Remember, we had that reversal we took here. We said lower odds, but interesting RR. That's also in play back to the bottom of the range. And here it's choppy, right? We're, we're far more confident on the short on Euro and on Kiwi than on cable here. And cable is still stuck inside this range. So what I would be looking for in terms of this week is that this is still much to do about nothing in terms of velocity of move inside range here and only daily closes below, let's call it the 130, then open up the 128, which is a big pivotal level, which we've discussed and we've been looking at for a long time. So that trade also hasn't really changed. And, and you know, you can see here Aussie failing at that level, coming right back down. Um, not super ideal. We much prefer the Kiwi. The Kiwi is the only one that was working off that negative close on the on the weekly. And now it's basically put in two negative closes in a row. You see how it's it's stalling exactly where you'd expect it to stall here. We'll have to see through the RBNZ, but you know, this is a quite a nice short setup, especially because there were chances to manage this nicely and take some risk off the table. But again, if this gets some traction, this could be a very, uh, very interesting one to keep an eye out for today. Um, what you clearly want to see is day closes, oops, back below this previous high. And if that goes, then there's plenty of room to come back down. And as a reminder, we were looking essentially for the 164 to come into play. So again, there's nothing that much going on different to what we discussed last week. Uh, a lot of these trades are trying to are trying to get some traction. OK, now on equities, as we said, as long as they're, tra you know, we'll look at them on the trading view charts. Not a lot of reason to try and be aggressively short ES or YM. Our base case was that uh, basically, you know, that, that the weakness started to come in on the 13th of, uh, of, of this month, oh, sorry, of July on FANG, and that high is going to hold. And we expected to see the underperformance of NASDAQ versus um, ES and YM. And you see here, this is holding, right? So we had those tight shorts we looked at in the, in the session on Friday, and, and this is holding, right? Really, the only way or where I'd want to be more aggressive for a little bit of downside for the NASDAQ, again, not looking for the world to end, is I want to see this trade back below this previous high. Remember, a lot of people trying to short it here, and we said there's no such thing as a triple top. Usually, these break to the upside. What we want to see is break, clear stops to the upside, pretend to get a little bit of traction and then fail to get some traction. That doesn't mean that we don't try some tactical shorts here, but the only place where we get conviction shorts are, you know, closes back below here. And what's interesting, if we get a close back below here and back below the 10 day moving average, then that opens the potential for that move back into the 10 1,500 or potentially the 10,000 mark for that five to 10% correction. That's also coming in play with some seasonal patterns, right? So again, not holding our breath, but those things look like they're trying to play out and they're very interesting here, right? Shorter term, right now, as we're getting and we're going into the turn of the hour, you see how not surprising, what would you expect here? You'd expect everything 
to stay in range, right? At least to stay inside previous day range. Why? Because it's summer. Everybody's uh, everybody's chilling. Nothing much going on. Low liquidity. We've had no news. We've had no real um, headline hit the wire. So why would why should price trade outside of previous day range? Why should the markets price something wildly? outside of what we saw on Friday. Nothing really has happened. So what you see here is basically, these are four hour charts, but what you've got essentially, you've got EJ inside previous day range, CAD inside, Aussie inside, Kiwi inside, Yen inside, Euro inside, Cable inside, Crude inside, Silver inside, gold inside, NASDAQ inside, right? The vast majority of the charts are back inside the previous day range, which is exactly what you would expect. This also incidentally are probably the one of the most interesting dynamics for those of you who are around and who wanna try and scalp. What's interesting, especially if you start to see price, so here, these would trigger some long setups if you're not already long. There was a nice long setup that triggered earlier on Aussie. I'll look at it in a second. But basically, what you'd expect going into uh, US flows is if you've seen something that's hovering around the previous day range and has tried to break out but couldn't get any traction, right? Yen, Euro, Aussie, Kiwi, right? What you would expect here is to see profit taking as they could not get any traction outside of previous day range and that profit taking would mean a move back inside previous day range or maybe even all the way into mid to more neutral territory. So these are very nice uh, tactical long setups. You know, they're not the same kind of previous day long setups we would we would look at as defined by, you know, our more core setups or what we looked into the foundational setups, but they're, they're tactical plays, right? There's, there's very tactical plays um on, on on a little bit of uh what would you expect which is no news no headline holiday season stuff that tried to poke its head outside previous day range just coming right back in and going into the open in more neutral territory right also when this lines up with the sunday open it's re it's even more interesting right basically we close on Friday, a little bit of wheeling and dealing, then we go back into where we closed on Friday. Wheeling and dealing, we're going back to where we closed on Friday. Wheeling and dealing, back to where we closed on Friday, right? Wheeling and dealing, back to where we closed on. You see, everything's just, because there's nothing going on, so there's no reason for them to really be aggressively trading outside. So again, that's um, fairly interesting action. And as you see here on the Aussie, this is one I traded. It's the only one hour that's set up uh, in terms of our, you know, our core setups in terms of previous day plays, but here you see the same dynamic. We poke, our, we, we, we close on Friday, right? So we're coming down, we're trying to do hanging around here. What does the market do? It tries to poke its head above here, clear O and highs, but you see it's just wicks. It's taking out some, some, weak, uh, some weak shorts in a very thin market. Then all of a sudden we come back down and, you know, we need to clear the opposite side. We have to be very democratic about this, right? You can't let fortune seekers that had tight stops below Friday lows thinking they got themselves a lottery ticket, give them a home run, right? So market comes in, we clear those suckers out too, right? And then we're going to clear the other side. Very classical action. So these one hour reversals as you're starting to come into uh, opening flows pre New York session are very high odds setups, especially if you're trying to scalp a one to one trade, but very high odds for the market to go back and try and clear the opposite side of the range. The same way we cleared this tight part of the ON range. Now all these shorts that think they got themselves a lottery ticket here with tight stops, most likely the market will try and clear those, right? Only once the flows come in, then we'll know what's going on today, right? So again, naturally, if we see here a lot of wicks forming and through opening flows through the 10 a.m. mark, etc., this holding, then it's 
a good piece of information that then you've got a good chance that we're going to go try and test these lows. But so far, you know, action is very, it's what you would usually see just at a different pace and different, uh, different kind of ranges because again, it's holiday. So there's not that much, um, that much going on. Okay. Yeah. And, and again, you'll see these things line up with a lot of setups, but again, uh, if I can give you a little bit bit of advice in general, people who are looking at setups like, you know, tight stops, looking at tight horizontal levels or bounces around moving averages, this is really not the ideal market for you, right? Because for those things to, to, to for you to be able to trade tight and aggressively around those setups and get very asymmetric plays, you need liquidity, you need trading, right? If you don't have, if you have a market with very thin liquidity and with widening bid ask spreads and a lot of shenanigans, it's not going to be ideal for you to trade tightly with stops because there's a chance you're just gonna get picked, right? You see there are a lot more wicks in this kind of action, right? So it's really not the ideal kind of market. So I would, especially if you wanna trade like that, I would recommend that you you, you, you concentrate your trading around, you know, the more liquid times and, you know, because it's just not worth it. You know, it's not worth it. You might get crappy fills. You might get slipped here and there, you know, especially if you're trading spots. So exactly. You know, and, and another interesting thing I would say you want to keep an eye out for. And I mentioned this also in the Sunday video this week. I re really keep an eye on how Tencent is trading. Also, if we keep on getting heated debate or, or you know, escalation with U.S. China, because not only is this in a lot of indices and ETFs, but it's important, but it's a good parameter to get a feel for sentiment, right? So watch how Tencent is trading. And also don't forget to keep an eye on copper, right? Again, in the bigger picture on the monthly, you know, nothing much has changed, but it's going to be interesting to keep an eye here on how this how this trades this week, right? You see, it started to trade a little bit, uh, a little bit heavy here. And if you, you look at this against something like uh, SPY, right? And you know you can go back in uh, in time, and we'll do this in a second. We'll go through. I'm, I'm going to stop the recording a second. If not, it's going to be too long. It's going to take ages to uh, to upload to YouTube. Uh, but you know, here it's interesting, an interesting dynamic. And here we'll just look back at how it how it traded in the past and some interesting things. Also, you know. Um, you know, don't get fooled by the fact a lot of people talking about, you know, we've had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine consecutive uh, up days in the, um, in the SPY. I think last time that happened was after the sell-off in early 2019, and that was 11. But this does not mean it has to puke. This means that if we get some selling pressure and some failure, you expect all these gaps to fill quickly. You expect the move back down to take a fraction of the time than the move back up. But it doesn't mean that it has to sell off because it's got nine greens in a row, right? Focus on the levels, focus on how it trades up here. And again, we'll look at this in a second after we finished uh, going through copper. Uh, let me just stop.